Hi ladies and gentlemen, I was talking to a, a, a YouTube user the other day who's also a radio talk show host and uh, he brought up something that I thought was kind of interesting and, and he's absolutely right of course. You know, the, uh, the United States, uh, especially the executive branch efforts are trying to shut down uh, coal-fired power plants here in the United States. Uh, and apparently, uh, of course, more coal-fired plants are being built in China every day. Where's the coal from the United States going? Huh. I hadn't looked into this before, but it sure makes sense that they're selling the coal that's being manufactured here in the United States to China. That would be my guess. Hopefully we can look into that and find out a little bit. But that would sure be telling, wouldn't it? Uh, he also mentioned a couple of other things that uh, I'd like to address, one of which is, well, I went on another user name's uh, YouTube site the other day because I found out he was, well, and I've known for some time that he was actually carrying some of my videos, and that's fine, that's very good, and I appreciate it. But, you know, just out of curiosity, I was looking through some of the comments, and I'm really kind of surprised about what I see sometimes. Um, and so I'm going to approach this from this point of view without mentioning any names, but just talking in broad uh, terms. You know, first of all, when I say that, uh, you know, I come from a scientific point of view rather than a dogmatic religious point of view, what I'm really saying is, is that I balance uh, my spiritual outlook with uh, what I know of science. And I'm not a scientist, of course I'm not. Certainly not a geneticist, as I've said before. But, you know, I'm relatively well-educated, and, you know, I've been taught how to think. Critical thinking, I guess you could say, which, of course, is not looked upon too favorably these days. People like to, you know, get dogma and just follow that down the road because it takes away some of their own requirements for thinking things through, asking questions, you know, things like that. But at any rate, one of the things that I do is, is I look at what the evil men in the world are doing. And usually what they're trying to do, like in the times of, and I, again, I bring in spiritual, biblical things. You know, the, the building of the Tower of Babel was to try to reach where God is, uh, to avoid the effects of another deluge or destruction, uh, but more importantly, trying to get where God is, to, to, to copy what God does. And that's what Lucifer is. He, he's, he's a copycat, but he's very good at it, okay? So... When you see these evil people, especially at that level, doing things, uh, it kind of gives you an idea of what God is doing in a subtle manner. Where am I going with this? One of the commenters on this other YouTube site said, well, Roy, you brought up this DNA change and I'm not gonna have anything to do with that because that's transhumanism and God made me the way I am and that's the way it's gonna be. <laughs> well, okay, I, I understand kind of where they're coming from. You don't, you don't want to, to be changed other than the way God will change you. But see, that's the point of my last video, the quantum change, all right? Science, under the direction of these Luciferians today, is seeking genetic modification of everything from our food, all right, to ourselves. Did you hear the other day about where they want to add a 47th chromosome? You know, human beings have 46, and they want to add this 47th chromosome. Now, that's artificial genetic manipulation for evil purposes, okay? transhumanist idea. Yeah, I'd, go, I, I'd say that's bad too, and nobody's going to do that to me or any of my descendants if I can avoid it. But when I talk about God doing it, He does it in subtle, natural, God-like ways. And that's what the quantum change video was about, this subtle change brought about by universal cosmological forces that are at God's disposal. So it's a natural change, and that's what we're looking at. I had to move inside because the wind was coming up, and I just knew it would be hard to hear. I'm almost done anyway. Uh, again, what I, what I wanted to point out here is that, yes, there is a difference in, in man messing with genetics and God doing it, and, or the universe, however you want to look at that. The point is, is that these changes that I'm talking about 
will be a natural consequence of cosmological events okay to put it just in wide broad terms okay so it's not transhumanist in the same in any sense okay as far as what man and man science luciferian science is doing and by the way uh, apparently genetic manipulation was uh, really one of the big causes of the deluge uh, however you view that either you know religiously or historically it's very possible it's very likely that uh, it was a result of this attempt by man to alter God's creation at that particular level uh, building a house is one thing messing with our house that's something else all, all together meaning our, our, our bodies of course our physical and, and spiritual selves so anyway and to go along with that, you know, I, I do like to talk about scriptures. And I, I made a video a while back called In Your Heart and In Your Mind. And I'd like to give you a couple of scriptures, one in the Old Testament, one in the New. They're really the same scripture. The, whoever wrote the New Testament was quoting this. But, but I'd like to, to let you see what I'm talking about. Remember I said in the quantum change, we have to have this change in our heart. We have to have an open heart to be able to receive these these influences from the universe, from God, however you want to view that. Uh, we don't want to close our heart and as a result have a resistance to this energy which causes heat. Well, let me give you these two scriptures because I think this, this says it. Uh, this change in us that we want to see is, is going to be done by God, okay? And it's going to be primarily to the people who accept him writing his law in their hearts and in their minds. So go to Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10 and then look at Jeremiah 31 chapter 31 verse 33. It would actually be a good idea to read verses 31 to 34. It's the same thing, okay? Virtually it's the same thing. Quote, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God. Pretty interesting. And Jeremiah says basically the same thing. So for those people who accept that, have that open heart and that open mind to get those changes to how they view things, their heart uh, their emotions, the, their, their reasons for doing things, their motivations. That will save them with these coming changes in the cosmology. And that's really what it's about. So all of you who worry about your DNA being changed, you know, for, for transhumanism's sake, that's not what I'm talking about. So please take what I say in context to everything else that I bring out, okay? Uh, that that was that comment was really way off the wall, considering what you know the, the entire subject matter was. But I'll just admit sometimes this can get pretty confusing, and so I'll uh, I'll just say I'm sorry if I made you misunderstand. But just look at my entire topic and how I progress on these issues, and try not to take something out of context. My whole thing is is that God's in charge, okay? That's the that's the thing. Uh, and, and there are different ways of viewing that. And, and I'm not going to issue dogmatic statements and, and, and say that you must accept them or suffer the consequences. You know, that, that's not right. That's a form of fear. Uh, as a matter of fact, and I'll say this, science has its dogmatic followers too. People that say that it must be thus and so and there's no other way. You know, be it evolution or, or be it, uh, you know, <laughs> junk DNA, you know, what it's for, you know. There are all kinds of things that science will say are absolute so that they can discuss those things in their semantic range, all right. That doesn't make it right, okay. Science can be dogmatic just like religion can be dogmatic. It's sometimes even worse. And just for the history, and I wrote this to a guy and unfortunately it, it, I accidentally eliminated it on, on my channel. There's a history to why this happened. When the church got its power in the Middle Ages, it approached people in science and it said, look, you can't talk about things of the spirit. 
Another way of saying things of the conscience of your awareness. You can't talk about that. That's out of your realm. That's ours. You stick with the physical universe. That's the, so they separated these two things out. All right. The importance of quantum uh, physics, or the quantum mechanics, the quantum field in particular, which is, is another way of saying this ether that the alchemists talk about. Okay. The importance of it is that now we realize that the consciousness cannot be separated from the physical reality. They are codependent, interdependent, okay? They are part of the same thing working in different ways. All right? So when you hear these scientists say, like one said on my, I don't know if he's a scientist or not, but he, he, he seemed to be trying to verbalize it that way that you know i'm deluded because i'm i'm breaking through this barrier well that's scientific dogma on his part do you understand all right because he's trying to still keep the two realms separate like the church insisted on not science didn't insist on it by the way this was a thing that the roman catholic church insisted on in the middle ages we don't want that anymore it's obvious that our consciousness has an effect on our reality and vice versa, okay? The interesting thing that came out here just recently, it's a Dr. Lanza, and I've got the link down below in the description box because I want you to see it. This information only became available, thank goodness, because Drudge put it on, but uh, you wouldn't normally find it in Western media, okay? At least not in the United States. But this Dr. Lanza talks about the quantum field, quantum mechanics, quantum physics, the idea of observation, and the idea, the important idea that time, the time-space continuum is not linear. Some scriptural, spiritual systems say it's circular, it's a great eternal round. That's more like it, and that's why in the Middle East so many people have circular thinking. And I tell you about my experiences on that, especially when it came to military and political ideas and, and situations, but we'll reserve that for another time. All I'll say is this, and in the Western world, we want to always think of things linear, and now quantum mechanics says, no, 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 that's not right. So this Dr. Lanza has produced very strong evidence. I would say it's conclusive myself, but there, this is going to be an argument for some time, that death is an illusion, okay? That our consciousness built, the, and you've heard other people say this, Alex Jones I know has said it a couple times, that, that we, you know, our consciousness collectively in one respect or maybe well, I'll just leave it at that all of us together created this physical reality for our experience I personally believe and I've said this before that the spiritual world before this one and afterwards is very similar to this in almost all regards okay with the exception of uh, I guess I'd have to explain it as sin or as doing bad things. Um, that, that, that is different. But anyway, that's a point of philosophical discussion I don't want to go to here today. But the real point is this, okay, that the world before is similar to this one and it's going to be similar to the one after. And I know a lot of Christians are going to get upset about that. But look at the Garden of Eden. This is where I go with mine. I'm just going to say this, and I've said it before, that the whole purpose of our physical existence is to go through an experience so that later, through the atonement of Christ in, in the Christian point of view, that the physical is reunited with the spiritual. Okay, physical matter, physical state of energy, which we call matter, is reunited with the spiritual state of consciousness in an inseparable, an inseparable connection so that you receive a fullness of joy from both existences, from what each has to offer. We are not inseparably connected with our physical bodies here. We can die. Okay, but that's so, in my estimation, it's a very harsh thing. It's, I, I don't like it. Don't misunderstand me. I'm, uh, I, I think it's, it's a, an experience that, despite what people have had near-death experiences say, it, it, it brings a lot of sadness and all of that. But be that as it may, it allows us to go through this change into this new subatomic structure, okay, which... Dr. Lanza's almost there with, okay? The resurrection of Jesus Christ in 
the New Testament might not have any real historical, and, and there are ways to get around that basis, but the Shroud of Turin is one of the most important evidences of this. It's a miracle that this thing has been kept around. This shows that whatever you want to call God, whether it's God or, or the universal consciousness, mind, you know, the divine matrix, I don't know how you want to define it. And I'm not going to dictate that to you as I try never to do. But what it does show is that this influence, this, this divine designer, this intelligent designer wants this reunification of substance with consciousness, with the spirit. And that was the true message that that is our end state. Basically, in the biblical story, returning to the Garden of Eden, okay? As I've said in a couple of other videos, man, woman, children, in a state of bliss, in a state of eternal life, in a state of, of lack of sin, of falling short of the mark, all of those things. But it's a work in progress, okay? It, it doesn't happen all at once, although in the quantum field, it would, it would probably say, yes, it, it is happening all at once, and we're just seeing how it, how it worked. I've heard another commentator talk about it that way. Anyway, taking too long again as usual I just wanted to, to clear that up about the DNA change that I am not talking about scientific uh, science scientists geneticists changing our DNA and moving us towards transhumanism in the sense that they are talking about I, that was not what I was talking about I think you understand that and at least I hope you do I'm talking about the the natural cosmological universe energies controlled by the grand designer, God, if you will, the intelligent designer, to upgrade us to our next level of awareness, to, to our next level of learning and of joy. Okay? All right. Uh, I, I hope to talk to you again a little later.